Hey guys, Harv here, and welcome to my overview of Kerbal Space Program version 0.18. We're going to take a look at the change log, and I'm going to show you some cool background footage of all the different things. To begin with, there are so many new features added. The amount of features is absolutely ridiculous, and the parts included are ranging from just the small things that are very nice touches to the massive additions that we've all been requesting for a very long time. And the, one, the most important in my aspect, in my playstyle and all this, the most important feature is docking. Connecting vessels together is now possible. We can build space stations, surface bases, and assemble massive spacecraft in orbit. It really is an extremely exciting proposition, and one I look forward to exploiting as much as possible. Flight planning is a new system that's been added. Not entirely sure what my opinion on this is, actually, but it seems very good. It basically entails that getting to other planets and moons is now a lot simpler. You can go onto your orbital path and place maneuvers along it in order to create a sort of a pl flight plan. And then you just got to file follow the guidance. Now the guidance marker is represented by a blue kind of arrowy kind of logo thing on your nav ball which tells you where to point and how much to burn. It, there's a level down the side which tells you how how much delta V you need to shift in order to in order to do the maneuver you want to do. The whole UI for the thing is pretty ergonomic and it's actually very very useful. I do like a new touch. I mean I don't I don't think I'll rely on it too much until I get really used to it but it's something that is definitely going to help the new players a lot. There's an improved map UI. The map icons now show close approaches, intersections with other orbits and lots more stuff like that. So you can focus on getting where you want to go instead of worrying about how to get there. Similar to flight planning, this is going to help a lot of people quite significantly. Now there's new vessel types and vessel renaming inside of flight mode. New vessel types is brilliant. You know the icon when I think there's only two in 0.17 and pre that, where you have a, in the map view, you have your debris icon and you have your command module icon. Ship and debris. Ship, debris. Now, however, there's so many more. We've got ship, we've got lander, station, probe, rover, base, and debris. So there's a wide variety of icons that are available on the map view. So if you're building a station, you can now rename and set your vessel as one of these new several types, and it'll show on the map with the appropriate icon and name. There are now automatic fairings. Rockets look like proper rockets. If, if an engine has a decoupler put underneath it, then a massive shroud will come up, called a fairing, and it'll cover up the engine so you don't have it exposed. Which seems illogical now I think about it, but I kind of just took it for granted. So that's a great new addition to the game. There are many improved models and textures. The, to the textures of the old parts have basically been completely redone. Now, the meshes are much better, so we shouldn't have the problems with aero spikes like we did last time. And hand-painted textures are also applied to some of the new and old parts, giving KSP a bit of a new look, a bit of a new makeover. And of course, there are more part types. There's solar panels, docking ports, batteries, ion engines, lights, side-mounted parachutes, which is amazing. Crew cabins, kind of like that mod I made a while ago, but no, it was... This is much better. You can have up to four people in the hitchhiker storage container, I believe it's called. There are new science parts, and there's a heap more. There's no point going into them all here. You have to go explore for yourselves once it's released. Now, unmanned probes. Unmanned probes have been added, so you can basically build ships and do missions on an extremely small scale in some, in some cases. These probes, man, you can get engines for them which are ridiculously small, you can get fuel tanks which are very small, and it looks pretty awesome. Haven't had a chance to play with it much myself, seeing as the update is brand new, even for us media people, but yeah. It is going to be very, very useful, especially for scouting out missions. 
Action groups have been added. Now, I haven't had a chance to play with these either, but there is a new way to control your ships, and it basically entails, instead of doing everything by pressing space through the staging mechanic, you can assign parts to groups that, could, that are controlled with a key press. So you can set up like a board systems, or rig up complex contraptions, or you can let the game handle it automatically. The abort systems in particular is something incredible that I'm very much... I've been requesting for a while on the forums before I kind of went off doing forum stuff. But abort systems... <laughs> very needed. Very needed. Now there are new input modes. There's no need to have two hands on the keyboard and the third one on the mouse anymore. New input modes make for much more ergonomic controls and it's all remappable. So what this entails in game is that you can switch between different control modes, staging and docking. Docking basically gives WASD the, key, the power to translate through your RCS. So it's interesting and a slightly more ergonomic alternative for some, but I'm kind of used to the old way of dealing with RCS, so you can still use that in the staging mode. There's no need to delve into this if you don't feel that it's necessary for you. There are two new celestial bodies, a planet and a moon, and they are known as Pol and Drez. So, new places to explore with interesting and varied terrain. Haven't been there myself. New resources system, so watching fuel drain is now handled differently, and there are much more possible possibilities. Energy has been added in the, in the form of electricity, now fuel and oxidizer have been separated, so instead of just having your fuel, you separate it into the actual liquid hydrogen, presumably, and the oxidizer, which is wonderful. The different fuel types are solid fuel, which is used by your solid rocket boosters, liquid fuel and oxidizer, used by your liquid engines, xenon gas, which I'm not entirely sure what it's used by, monopropellant, which is used by RCS, electric charge, and there is also the air intake, which is used by your atmospheric jet engines. This is all viewable from the resources tab in the top right hand corner of your screen. Landing lights have been added to the game, so basically landing on the dark side of the moon is now a lot less dreadful. So there are now two different types of landing lights, there's the landing and floodlight parts. Atmospheric engines now require an actual intake, so turbines require air to run and intakes provide it for them. The intakes being the standard ones that we had as of point seventeen. So the standard ones are still there, and now there's a radial one that you can put on the side, like a big horn that just sucks in atmosphere. So as long as there's an atmosphere around you, you can use the you can use the engines, which is great. Kerbal Space Program now has its own soundtrack featuring many cool different tracks, from smooth, jazzy tunes to build ships by, to wondrous space themes that fill you with awe and joy as you explore the solar system. I have to say I'm enjoying the music immensely. Really good. I will just turn the music right up, get into bed on my laptop, just playing the game and listening to the music, because it's great. Really nice. Improved planets. Kerbin looks a lot better now. It's got hand-built train features in some cases, as you will find southeast of the Kerbal Space Center. Moho and Eve have also got major overhauls, and many others have been improved in different features. And, of course, finally... The whole game has been optimised, which is so good. I have to stress how important that is for games. I'm running this on a very low-end system, which is uh, it makes me surprised that I'm getting this far. And, you know, it's amazing. But um, I'm running this on a very low-end system, which these optimizations really help my game. Really help my enjoyance of the game and everything like that. And that, ladies and gentlemen is the end of the Hawk Gaming version 0.18 overview. And by the way, there's no point speculating on release dates. <laughs> the actual release date, unless this video is out of date by the time it gets uploaded, has not been announced yet, so don't worry about that. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope this one was slightly more interesting and certainly more useful than the other two rushed videos I uploaded. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.